Lab Guy here. Once again, I find the need for a dual wideband amplifier with good linearity and DC capability. I've decided to build that amplifier today. To begin with, I need to prepare a quad op amp for the input stage, so we're going to use a Max 4395 quad video op amp, which I am going to install onto an adapter board and let you guys see how that is done. I have to do this because this part is only available in the SO package as far as easy assembly goes. I will be using this adapter board made by Electro Boards. It's the model SO14 50-EB. This is for small outline packages with 50 mil pin spacing. The Max 4395 op amp has two power pins, one for plus 5 volts, the other for minus 5 volts. We will be bypassing these to ground on the adapter board using 0603 sized 0.1 microfarad 25 volt capacitors. The adapter board has a ground plane on it. It's covered by a solder mask which we have to remove to create a pad to solder the ground end of our bypass capacitor. This is the first step I always do. You can scrape the solder mask off using the edge of your X-Acto knife by pressing down very firmly, keeping the blade somewhat square to the surface and scraping. I, you note I cut two starter scratches. Those help me to stay inside the lines. As you see, we scrape away the red solder mask and expose the copper. And that is where we will be attaching the capacitor. We do the same thing on the other side. The power pins are pin 4 for VCC plus 5 volts and pin 11 for VEE or minus 5 volts. Before soldering, I clean the board using a art gum rubber eraser. It works very good at removing the uh, oxide buildup and dirt. Gold doesn't oxidize. These boards are really excellent boards. They are gold plated and they're very easy to work with. I purchased my 0.1 microfarad 0603 size capacitors in bulk. So they come on tape like this. You just take out a couple as you need them, and there you go. So let's put the first capacitor on. I grab it with my tweezers. I pre tin the uh, ground side and I solder it down. Line it up carefully. And there it is. And solder the other end lightly. Don't fill up the holes. We're going to be putting pins in those later. I know that's hard to see. And we do the same thing with the capacitor on the other side. So the next step is to put on the chip. Before I put on the chip I usually tin one of the uh, corner pads. In this case pin 8. That gives the uh, chip something to stick to when we first place it on the board. Takes a little practice. If you eventually you get the feel for it, and when you're lined up just right, you tack it down. I try to center the part so that it looks good. And then once uh, it's tacked down, you just work your way around, soldering each pin one at a time in normal fashion until you've soldered all 14 pins. It's not very hard. You do need a fine tip soldering iron for this. And there it is, bypass capacitors, ground plane, and a mounted chip. Pins next. Let's take a closer look with the magnifying glass. At the top, 
and at the very bottom you can see the small ceramic bypass capacitors. One is between the numbers 5 and 3, the other is between 10 and 12. You can get these header pin strips in bulk form like this. This is called a 1 by 40. I cheat. I just measure by putting it in the uh, in the position it'll go to. You could count the pins. If it, if you have to make a long one, it gets gets a little confusing sometimes. Get cross-eyed looking at them. They just snap off very easily, just like that. And then we uh, place them on the bottom side of the uh, adapter board. And line them up a little bit. Stand it up. You try to try to make the pin square if possible. And solder the middle pin on each strip just to hold it in place for now. And then square it up so that attempt to get the pins as square as possible otherwise they won't go into the board that this will mount to and there you have it they're tacked on let's flip the board over and have a look and see if the pins are square and by golly look at that they're nice and square Now we just go ahead and resolder the rest of the pins, and the adapter is ready to use. You'll see how we use it in part two of the dual scan amplifier project.